Hello everyone watching at home. Welcome to Adelaide Eternal. We're bringing you the Adelaide Eternal Legacy Challenge for November 2019. I am Sava McClinton and in the booth with me as always is Becca Wolf. G'day guys. So we have a matchup between Dean Culpin on the left who is on Miracles. This is just the blue-white Miracles uh, version. And on the right, we have Mono White in the hands of Raj Deep Toki, who is playing yeah the uh, back to flashback to uh, Mother of Runes. <laughs> flashback to flashback. Mother of Runes. I yeah. ever since That's Red right. and Six, I remember Raj saying, "Oh, thank God, now I can finally put Mother Mother of Runes back in my deck after Red and Six got banded land." Yeah. Mm. What was the other one? Rune Rune giving, Giver of Runes. Giver Giver of Runes. Yeah, yeah, that was that was the one that was popular for a while. But thankfully, one toughness creatures have come out to play in the form of death and taxes. Uh, we have things like you know recruiter of the guard picking up flicker wisps to flicker recruiter of the guard to go then find a mirror crusader or something. It's pretty much good times for the uh, the small white creatures again, right? Except That's right. Plague engineer, I guess, but. Uh, that's at least a lot easier to play around. A lot easier? It's easier to play around than having a resolved Ren and Six Planeswalker that just kills creatures every turn. Yeah, and also doesn't let you do your other game plan, which is Mana Denial. Yeah, yeah. So if you haven't seen Death and Taxes in action before, you're going to get to see it in this one where uh, Raj is going to try and Mana Denial and, you know, tax the uh, the big control deck because that's just how this matchup plays out. If we flip over to the big control deck, uh, this is uh, Blue White Miracles. And as you can see, there are very, very low numbers of actual business, like actual win cons. Uh, in the form of two Monastery Mentors and two Jace the Mind Sculptor. Uh, and hey, you can do Snapcaster Mage Beatdown, but it's not your primary game plan. Uh, the rest of the deck is just all interaction. Just mono interaction and ways to find interaction. You've got Brainstorm, Ponder and Portent, to, uh, as well as uh, Narset Pardo Avails, to find all of your pieces of interaction with the board, like Terminus and Source of Plowshares, as well as interaction with people's hands in the form of Spell Pierce, Spell Snare, you know, Force of Wills and um, you know, Counterbalance. Yeah, uh, they're very different decks, aren't they? Yeah. Um, and uh, who, do, who do you think's favoured? I mean, I think a lot of it comes down to Thalia. Yeah. So, Thalia and Freeman, but uh, otherwise I feel like Blue-White is probably favoured. Yeah, when you look when you look at this list, this specifically this Blue-White list on the screen right now, uh, the key card is, uh, aside from obviously killing creatures with Terminus, the key card is accumulated knowledge. If you get the accumulated knowledge train rolling and you your entire deck is interaction, so your entire deck trades one for one with your opponent's creatures or two for one sometimes in the form of, you know, Narset and Terminus, then your ancest uh, your uh, accumulated knowledge being essentially ancestral recall at certain points in the game uh, lets you draw two of those cards and then three of those cards and so on and so forth allowing you to just uh, completely dominate the game the issue is all about that early game if Raj can come out swinging early with Thalia to hold uh, uh, Dean's mana down uh, in the early game he's going to have a huge advantage mm, well should we get down to the games um, all right I think let's it's have also really relevant who's on the play and if Raj can get an Ether Vial, I think nice. that's going to be really, really relevant. Handshake. The handshake to begin. That Ooh. is uh, uh, very sporting. So, you know, that was a very fast match, maybe. Maybe we just missed the whole, <laughs> <laughs> the whole match. For Turn one to scoop to make sure I'm on the play. <laughs> uh, so, Dean's hand looks to have a balance of lands and spells. Uh, and, oh, actually, not oh, a balance of lands. So it's just lands. a single land, but it is a basic and a ponder. So if he's on the play, he's able to use a ponder to find his land mana sources. This is also a low land count hand, but it's got Ether Vial. Even yeah. though it's only two oh, land, good, two yeah. Ether Vials, I think two... that's great against Control. Yeah, although I don't know if I want the second Ether Vial ever. Mm, again, I think against Control, you're okay with it, right? Really? I feel like... You probably don't, but... You run out of gas if you've got two Ether Vials. Like, I feel like one Ether Vial, you already... That's like one less business card you've got. I mean, now against Force, it's very good. Yeah, that's one less right. business card you've actually got. But um, it's worth it because it gets things out fast and it gets things out under counters and mm. it gets things out instant speed. Um, but, like, whenever I've played with Ether Vial, even with one, I feel like I can feel the fact that I've yeah, got one, one, less, down. one less creature. Yeah. So having two, you know, I, I think that's the risk of playing Ether Vial. Yeah, well, uh, on the on the earlier topic, the 
Oh, yeah, no, the, the one doing. land hand with the ponder found the ponder found tundra and bulk, so it's definitely not a shuffle. So he was able to find his mana sources. Uh, the problem is their non-basic mana sources, and a lot of the miracles lists have started to really push hard into the basic lands, especially with prismatic vista now. Yeah, prismatic vista really really changed some. Of... Oh, counterbalance. Now this is really interesting because counterbalance can do a lot of work or not much work at all, and it's highly variable based on your opponent's deck. Now, with uh, Death and Taxes, there are actually a wide variety of mana costs, all the way from 1 through 4, uh, with some of its best creatures being on 3. Now, for uh, Miracles, the 3s in the deck are few and far between. Recent addition in the form of Narset actually pushed Miracles curve up more, making Counterbalance better at dealing with Death and Taxes' as threats. Right, okay, so I'm counting two Monastery Mentor, two Narset, and a Council's Judgment. No, is there a no, entreat? Uh, the so we've got five on three. Yeah, which um, in the past, Miracles didn't have it, had one. Which but it's not going to matter too much with a Vile out either. No, Vile is going to just be, you know, determining this game. And the second Vile ended up actually coming in a useful, even though we were talking about how, yeah, it's, it's you don't want to have a hand with two of them. Turns out against Force of Will, it is great. Now, uh, Sword of Fire and Ice is incredibly useful at pushing past True Name Nemeses and the like, but in reality, against Miracles, almost all of their removal deals with the thing that is it's, equipped. It's tough to get a connection. Exactly. I think if you get a connection, you've probably won, but it's very it's very difficult to get a connection. Yeah, for sure. Now, the original accumulated knowledge is, of course, exiled, so this is only going to draw a single card, but it sets you up for future turns, whereby the subsequent accumulated knowledge is going to actually be uh, better than predict. So, in comes Sword of Fire and Ice off the Stoneforge Mystic activation. Not much you can really do about that, but... Was that... Yeah, I think that was a main phase AK to try to find a land drop. Yeah, that's a really, really rough position it's to be It's rough, because you, you're tapping yourself out, but, you know... Um, Especially against a Wasteland deck, I think you wanted to hit that land. Yeah, there are tricks you can do, you know, when you have hit your land, where you kind of go, you know, counterbalance, and you reveal something that's not the right card, but then your opponent plays a second card in the turn, and so you can trip with the accumulated knowledge to draw a new card, mm. uh, to draw that card, and then you have a new card on top to flip to that second spell. But that's not going to happen when your so opponent's got Aether Vial and they're discarding cards. Discard <laughs> to hand size yeah. there. Um, but it does have Aether Vial, so it's not like... Raj is tapped out, so to speak. Um, I think Raj is very good. This is a really, really interesting spot because Dean has hit his third land, allowing him to fetch Tundra, but he has Monastery Mentor in hand. The opportunity of jamming his Mentor and then being able to make some tokens off, say, Force of Willing, uh, Swords of Plowshares or something, and letting him, you know, chump block that Stoneforge Mystic and then untap the following turn is an option. Problem is... If he doesn't have Force of Will, it's a terrible spot to be in because you're just Even hoping your top, fo- I top agree. Of your deck is a one mana spell. He does have a Force there. I can see that he's very far right. But even then, I think Raj can just swing yeah, and, and do it, not, do not cast a spell and then try to try to deal with the Mentor. Absolutely. Second yeah. main. Dean and- really needs to just kind of hit land off his draw now and then cast a, uh, you know, a portent or something right after that Monastery Mentor to immediately generate right. a token to chump Well, it. that's right. And, and the, the the Mentor dies, really, because Sophie will trigger and kill it. Correct. So, so you're yeah, forced into chumping anyway, which is not what you want to be doing. Yeah, you can't really... Um... All right. So it's probably going to resolve, unless there's a Flicker Wisp. Flicker Wisp would be the blowout here. There is a Flicker Wisp. If Raj is thinking about this, this is... Oh... This is brutal. Oh, man. Good. That is that is really, really harsh because he's going to be able to get a second equipment and he's got a Flicker Wisp out and he's essentially countered a spell. So, so Mum and he can pay two to equip? Yeah. I mean, once the Mother of Runes is... Uh, well, actually, once it's equipped, it doesn't really do much. But yeah, he's going to be equipping the Flicker Wisp and just getting in there, and then the Mother of Runes is going to give it protection from white when he needs it. Force of Mum. When you have to force of will the Mother of Runes, that's a sign that you're very far behind. Yeah, I guess he might have, or you're hoping to have some more Swords to Parshares. Yeah, and it's looking pretty good. And you can see why I said, if you've triggered Sophie, you've probably already won. Yes. You know, it's not like modern. I'm playing so- uh, Stoneforge in modern, 
and like often you can like trigger the swords and it's not even game over mm. and I'm so used to legacy where like one trigger with a GTA or with a um, Sophie is just game over um, and, and, and you can see it here like Dean was stifled on that mental turn and Sophie's just going to deal with every creature that he can play and it's going to get too much card advantage yeah, uh, and the protection it's just it's just too much power isn't there so here's a brutal back to basics but it's largely brutal for Dean himself yeah I know uh, right? you know whilst it shuts off Caracas and prevents uh, cheeky Lothalia shenanigans the back to basics isn't actually going to do much at all to Raj yeah and there's eight coming in um, off the trigger as well so you know there has to be basically terminus, terminus. here and, and then even then, there's a vial and a turn. Yeah, and his hand is so stacked. It's so full. I think I saw a recruiter guard. I could just be making that up. Yeah, but... I've just seen Thalia. Here's Thalia, so... Okay, yeah. in fact, Thalia does it, because you can't cast the Terminus through... Th- oh, no, she, no, he no. He can, he's got yeah. The, yeah, he's got the fire arms, sorry. So it's all about Terminus here, Terminus or Bust. Well, and the back to basic, the counterbalance triggered no Terminus, right? Uh, yeah, it was a brainstorm, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yep. That'll do it. So, so now it's so now it's yeah. Now it's bra- oh no, he can't because I was going to say now he can brainstorm yeah. find the the terminus, but but no, it doesn't quite taxed. work because that's it. Uh, and the 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 actual card draw itself doesn't yeah has to be on your opponent's turn in their upkeep and yeah, it's a very awkward spot to be in. The Thalia really really kind of sealed the those possible lines. So, looking at the sideboard, uh, this is actually probably one of the most iconic Legacy matchups. When you look at Legacy and you kind of think, you know, whilst we as, you know, if you're familiar with Legacy and you're immersed in it, you're going to be familiar with all these cool, kooky little decks here and there that do sweet things and, you know, you have reminisce, uh, you know, about your Black Red Reanimator versus Khan Forge matchup or something, but... When you look at Legacy and you kind of look at, you know, the iconic decks, it's a control deck like Miracles against a taxing deck, you know, or a Delver deck or something like that. That's kind of fair Legacy. Mm. So looking at this iconic matchup, we can probably ask, you know, either person, have you ever had this situation where you ask someone, you know, let's say we ask Raj, who's favoured in this matchup? And he'll be like, oh, you know, death and taxes, it's like a 52, 48% matchup and death and taxes is favoured. But then you ask Dean and he'll be like, oh, you know, I think Miracles is favoured. It's like 53, <laughs> 47. You can't really get a, a hard answer between <laughs> between this kind of, you know, iconic matchup. And that's why they're two heavy hitter decks in the format because they've always got game. So looking at the sideboard... Well, yeah, it also depends on the configurations. There's so many different configurations with with both of these decks. You know, traditionally, Death and Taxes always had all these choices about, you know, am I playing Sanctum Prelate or, you know, am I playing, mm. you know, another Recruiter or I'm playing Mirror Crusader? How many Fraxian Revokers do I play? Exactly. In the main and... So I think, you know, they're, they're small percentages, but it does come down to that when we're talking about, as you say, decks that are close to 50 50 uh, in win percentage versus each other. It's very relevant. If we look at Dean, um, I really like Containment Priest here. It stops Flicker Wisp and it stops Vile. It's a great um, blocker, isn't it? Where you kind of flash it in like another Swords to Plowshares and just block a, uh, you know, attacking Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, that, that kind of, that kind of you know, situation. Well, and it stops those shenanigans that I was referring to. I like Supreme Verdict. I think you're taking out Back to Basics because um, it's not good versus Raj. Yeah, Back um, to Basics is an easy cut. Easy yeah. cut here. Do you think you have to keep in the forces if you're um, distant chances are, are also coming in? Yep. Do you, Gideon, Allies, Endicar is going to be slammed into this. Yeah, absolutely. Probably, maybe Nars. It's not great because there's not that much draw, and if there is Nars, it can be pressured anyway. Yep. Nars is almost always uh, look at the top four cards. It's like a one search for Azcan to activation. Gain three life. That's usually what Nasa yeah. kind of reads as in this kind of oh, matchup. It's not terrible, but especially if you're getting taxed on the yeah. draw, you don't want to be paying four yeah, mana like for that. Four mana Nasa, and then the spell that you play off that is the Swords of Plowshares, so that's uh, six mana to six kill mana Swords to Plowshares. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd rather just be high on cards that you actually impact the board with, and that's probably going to be the case of Containment Priest, Gideon, Supreme Verdict, uh, disenchant, disenchant, and that's it, probably. Yeah. Agreed. So, with the 
uh, Death and Taxes side of the uh, matchup. Sanctum Prelate is obviously coming in on one. Oh, here we go. So Jace is coming out, Counterspell coming out. I, I didn't see the Back to Basics coming out, but... Oh, Force of Negation. Interesting. I think I would have put in Gideon, Ally of Zendikar over that Force of Negation. Right? Yeah, and I think I would have put in uh, two, two Disenchantments. Yeah, so one of the ways that you... Oh, lower and slower? Oh, here we go. He's got it. Raj is on top. So he's... Wow, Raj is really, yeah. really boarding. Is this potentially overboarding? I think so. I really don't like Rest in Peace in this matchup. Uh, people seem it's to always... It's de- Staffcaster only. Yeah, right? and AKs. I mean, oh, people, AKs, but people, right. see, but people see like any sort of graveyard interaction or shenanigans or something and they instantly bought in um, anti-graveyard. And but it's I, like one less creature. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it's fine if you're playing like spell Nail or spell bomb yep. and you can just cycle it and you're like, oh yeah, this might switch off a Gurmag mm. or might switch off a Snap at a relevant point. Or, yep. But, you know, largely you just want the gas and I just constantly beat players because I play with Snapcaster Majors a lot and I just constantly beat, beat Snapcaster Majors that play Ley Lines and Rest in Peace and I'm like, alright, now I just get to play a proactive Ambush Viper Yeah, and I'm like, we're, we've both paid two mana, we've both played one card and mine does something and yours doesn't. Yeah. You know, and you've boarded that in, you so know. So means your Phyrexian Revoker or some other kind of creature, you know, one of your fringiest creatures is not yeah. in, in and the... I, and I think I, I know why... Uh, I know why they side in Council's Judgment in this matchup because there's a few like yeah. big things you, you need. Must answer that Jace or. Whatever. But I don't think it's an amazing card. Like it's not really where you want to be. I think. Like mm-hmm. I agree, you have to have a couple in there, but I don't know if three's correct. Yeah. Especially I... when you're taxing yourself potentially. You know, Jace. Like if you Council's Judgment or Jace, it's already activated. I see Jace as like an ETB sort of creature because it comes in, it brainstorms. Then you like go to judgment, and they're always up one one yeah. card, yeah. and that's that's best case scenario. Yeah, I think it's possible that Raj might just end up running out of steam in this particular one because he's on and he's, the he's on something like eight well. more eight more do nothing not do right. nothing cards, but there are eight eight more cards that are not creatures. He sort of and... doubled down on on trying to like stay with the blue white deck with removal, and I think you want to double down on being aggressive and mm-hmm. being hate berry, which is what you you are. Yeah. Palace Jailer, I'd like. That's the for, for me. Palace Jailer is the really interesting uh, mm. sideboard choice because it's so good versus some creature decks, yeah, and it's so, it's so bad, bad versus yeah. some control decks, and then it can totally flip and be the opposite of that. Yeah, so true. So uh, it looks like it hasn't come back to punish him. He's actually got a hand with a lot of threats, like Mother of Runes. He's got a good curve. Thalia yeah. and Flicker Wisp is a great curve, and then he's going to have the opportunity to counsel his judgment something. Yeah, we'll know. we'll see though. I don't know the result of this, and, and I think that is a good hand. But we'll see. Even there, the Cataclysm isn't punishing the hand or anything, but he's got Cataclysm and Counsel's Judgment in that, and that's on key turns when you want to you apply the pressure turn one, two, three, and then. They're struggling to deal with it, struggling to deal with it, and while they're struggling to deal with it, then you really put the choke hold on with some like powerful like batter skull, flicker wisp off an ether vial. And that's what we saw game one. You put that extra like, no, you can't get out of this. And instead of doing that, no, you can't get out of this, he's going, I've got backup plans just in case he's. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that there's a difference there because the turn one, two, three is going to be the same, but then those turn four, five, when he's got to make a choice about Am I committing more to the board and really finishing you off? Or am I going to like hold back and rely on this? And I think that just little bit of easing off the gas, easing off the pressure, too much breathing is, space. is going to give. And, yeah. you know, blue white control doesn't need much breathing space. It just needs one good moment. And we saw in mm-hmm. game one, it was exactly that. All Dean needed was one good moment where he can play mentor and untap with it and have, like, a source to power share and a, whatever, AK or something. Mm-hmm. And then he's won. But he never got that chance because Raj had that extra pressure constantly. Yes, so true. And sometimes you board against his control decks, but the way that he boarded is the kind of way that he would want to board. Maybe not the rest of the pieces, but the way he'd want to board with those Council of Judgments if he's playing against, say, Grixis Control, where they've got two Liliana of the Last Hope and... Oh, that's a clunker. Two Liliana Last Hope and... Uh, uh, two game three, three snap, yeah, yeah, and and also three, uh, two to three plague engineer. So he goes, I just need council's judgments. If I don't have these, I'm just gonna lose the game. So yeah, I can I can see that you know there's a certain kind of package that you tend to bring in against control, but the control decks aren't all created equal. No, absolutely not. And I play Gooks's control a lot, and 
and it's the same thing with the rest in peace again. You know, I'll go back to it mm-hmm. that no, you oh, can't as, command soon a snap, as, but... as soon as I see rest in peace, even with a handful of snaps, I'm just like, sweet, you know, you've now changed. Now I've got these two, two ones. Like I don't have to wait to find value off my snap. Yeah. It's, it's a done deal. And I'm you know, just... to use your K command to be like, discard in your upkeep, kill that equipment or kill that creature, kill that equipment rather than just returning a creature. That's right. You know, it's such a versatile... They're all versatile cards. And, mm. and really, all it ever does is is switch off one or two cards. And even then, I've cast a 7-mana Gurmag before. <laughs> not, yep. not too often. Yeah, but it happens. But, but you know what else, though? The rest in peace, it slows the game down. Mm. Because you're not applying pressure. So then, you know, that in that Gurmag example, you're more likely to get to turn 7 and play a 7-mana mm. Gurmag. Yep, and true. once it's out, that's a whole card, you know? So Dean's on five cards here, which is pretty punishing, and he's on the play because so it's a really, really uh, so down to four bad already. Combo. Yeah, <laughs> but he did keep a decent selection of five cards. It's you know portenty, pondery type stuff. We got brainstorm, turn one brainstorm. Ooh. He does have a fetch lane in hand, but uh, I think you probably brainstorm on your opponent's turn. In yeah, and I think he kept the actually, back to basics I, there. Well, sorry, just say to say that again. You only brainstorm on your opponent. Uh, you only do the play I was suggesting brainstorm on your opponent's turn. If you're worried about a Thalia, then you just do it in response yeah. to Thalia. I don't but think in reality, you just don't anything. brainstorm at all here. Well, because there's no proactive turn twos you really want to be playing, right? Mm. Like counterbalance. There's two counterbalance in pos- deck. That's it. It's possible that it is a fine play if you had counterbalance in hand. Yeah, if it's in hand. Mm. But I don't think you just like hope to randomly find it. Yeah, this is where you just have to snap off AK, right? Because yeah, absolutely. you're just going to fall so far behind if you don't. Um. Yeah, the, the I think there is logic there to the turn one brainstorm in in, in that yeah if you hit a counter a, a counterbalance uh, on the play he could get some amount of value from it but um yeah I don't I don't believe you just do it you know the thing with brainstorms is I think when you're doing turn one brainstorm and you go like yes I understand brainstorm can be very powerful turn five but I'm so far behind I don't expect to get to turn five yeah so this is um this is an uh, a spot where he had ancestral uh accumulated knowledge in hand and opted to go for the brainstorm instead of the ak i think you just jam the ak AK. draw an additional card deeper into your deck use be mana efficient uh and then have the um uh, the brainstorm. Ready Maybe to go he's the looking for turn. swords to swords the mum, but mum's already active. Yeah, I can't active. see it. I agree. I would definitely AK because man is going to be tight, so it's going to be. Ooh, oh, okay. that's why. That makes sense. That's why. Yep. Yep. We were wrong. He must he have had, found. Had he must have found terminus hand. off the from first, the earlier brainstorm. First yeah, brainstorm. Yeah. yeah. And he needed to place it further down or something. Or yeah. Maybe. Fair enough. Not sure. It, either way, uh, this is something that happens with topless miracles nowadays, where you end up using your brainstorms uh, in order to actually set up terminus and other types of cards, and it ends up kind of chewing through your very very high value so you cards. You become like very brainstorm. reliant on them. Don't you? Yeah, and and if you use up your brainstorm there in order to set that up it's sometimes just better to have supreme verdict, which is why you end up seeing so many supreme verdicts in miracles nowadays. So, as in, instead of Terminus, or as uh, well as? As well as Terminus, but yeah. yeah. Uh, so here's Portent. Portent with the... It's like some kind of random cons- uh, constructed deck yeah, package I, say, I haven't seen that before, kind. but yeah. I do recognise it as as Portent. Mm, I think so. I must have seen it from somewhere. Might be commonly played online, but uh, the, the old art is sweet. It's super trippy. Yeah. <laughs> what, is it... Oh, he's the artist. I know the, I know the mm. art, though. It's, mm. it's from that period. There's you know, a that, lot, that there's a lot that were like that. Yeah, look it up. Yeah. It's great. It's great. It's, uh, great art. So he's using Flicker Wisp, Flicker his own land, so that it comes back into play untapped at the end of his turn, allowing him to have something like Swords to Plowshares open in case a mentor comes down. Well, this is what I mean, though. So he's played Flicker Wisp at turn three, and I like that. I think that's correct. But he would rather be playing... I think, like, Recruit of the Guard there or, like, something else, like, and then keep the Flicker Wisp back to to deal with, you know, or to get value off, you know, an ETB. Um, I agree, he wants to play it, but... 
Yeah. So here's the. What do any of these cards do? Here's what the rest in peace. Rest in Given peace the do there? rest in peace affect Snapcaster Mages. I guess uh, if he has Snapcaster Mage in hand, because he's got Source of Powers in hand, it's possible that he goes. Well, I'm gonna Sword Snap Sword next turn or the turn after, or whatever it might be, at some point. Uh, and he really wants to val- value that Snapcaster Mage, whereas the uh, Force of Negation was hard cast. So it's a one for one. And the Force of Negation is largely only going to counter an, a non-Stoneforge Mystic um, art equipment. Well, I wouldn't have even or, cited in Force of Negation for, for that reason. For sure. For but sure. the other thing is... I mean, Sometimes you do counter d- the Planeswalker, but d- yeah, for sure. I well, Dean's been. countered that because he goes, oh, like one day this Rest in Peace might do anything. And I think that's totally a legitimate reason to counter something or to deal with something. But I will say there's a big difference between a card coming down and being relevant immediately and a card coming down and generating value over time, like a Planeswalker, mm-hmm. and the worst iteration, which is a card coming down and being relevant in turn 6, 7, 8. Yes. And, and and that, yes, they can be game-winning all the time, but they've got to be really worth it for you to invest in an early important turn, like turn 2, to get value on a less important turn, like turn 6 or 7. And this when is, that and when that is just in the rest in peace, like for me, I really don't like it. This is why he countered it. He had a second AK, uh, yeah, AK in hand. So he, it, I mean, there's nothing. The force of negation it, wasn't doing anything else. Well, so yeah, I the can force see. of negation was representing two cards because mm-hmm. actually he was gaining two cards off the AK. So I can see why he did the counter spell. Sometimes it's just scary because then you have shields down and you no longer can counter a cataclysm or a Gideon ally of Zendikar or something nasty. Well, I don't think. I don't think pro white uh, does it <laughs> does stop it, but yeah, oh, it's mainly because swords. Yeah, yeah, in case it was a follow up tundra swords or something, plain swords. So you just may as well do it. But this flicker wisp was going the distance, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you imagine that rest in peace was another just a Fraxian revoker or just some other creature. Mm-hmm. Um, and see, and Dean kept him back to basics there. I feel like this is one of the few decks that has heaps of back to basics. Yeah, like, back to back the to basics, basics is anything. powerful, but it's very slow. You know, like even against decks that have hardly any basics, you know, sometimes it's it's too slow. Mm. And and against a deck with heaps of basics, um, well, I... there's terminus and another AK. So he's getting rewarded for countering the the uh, rest in peace here because that AK is going to draw him three cards. But he's also setting up a terminus at some point for those cards to be drawn, so he can stack it in such a way that it's the first card he draws off an AK on his opponent's turn. So there's some pretty sweet little shenanigans he can do there. So this is, a you know, his turn ponder, probably drawing the AK and probably setting up the Terminus on top there. And you probably just take three here so that you can Terminus end of... I think you just take three because seven and four don't mean anything, right? Seven and four doesn't really mean anything. So you just, you just take three... Uh, Raj plays a second creature because he's not just going to leave one creature out because mm. it's going to get Source of Plowshares. Because the other card in hand is Source of Plowshares, I believe. And Dean's and now was... sort of going up. And, and, and I think, you know, like I can see, yes, now AK is, is sort of winning the game. Um, but similarly, I think, uh, you know, if Raj had a bit more gas, like he's got, we know he's got Cataclysm in hand, mm-hmm. right? He was building up to a big Cataclysm. Yeah. Sure. But if that was like another critter. That could have done oh, seven damage that's shuffle, over. Right? It's like force of will, land, something else, right? I don't know what... If there's something else was good, then it's not a shuffle. Prismatic Vista, planes. Oh, I think it was like, yeah, planes, another I land. I saw Delta. Yeah, 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 it was like land, planes... Yeah, fetch land, planes, force, and I'm pretty sure you just... Yeah, especially with Vile. I was going to say, maybe you feel like... Oh, he's got this... Nice. Jump. Maybe he just wants jump. that force really badly to... Because he's, he's a like bit Like hardcast force or something. Yeah, I mean, he's like on seven life, you know, he's feeling the pressure a bit. Ooh, very nice. Okay. This. He could have been Jace, or yeah. he could have gone, once I resolve Jace with four, so I guess... Yeah, I think he's probably sense. got, he's probably got, he wanted to draw the force so that he can pitch it, and uh, pitch something to it, and then yeah. counter a, counter a... And now he's got another judgment. force, I believe a mentor, and a... Um, Containment priest, so he's yeah, yeah. This is looking this, very solid. Yeah, this game has really, really, uh, like, gradually snuck away from Raj in a really deceptive manner. You know, like it, it looked like uh, Dean was behind for a long time, and then you know he's engineered a spot whereby he can slam Jace and have protection, and now he's so far ahead. Yeah, that's right. 
Now, Cataclysm does not interact with the uh, Planeswalkers. Oh, no. or, or does interact... Do, it, know, it, it makes them sacri- they yeah, do lose they the lose the Planeswalker. The planeswalker. Yeah. Oh, so it, maybe there wasn't a blue card in hand. Because... Because I think that his brainstorm revealed some lands, and he was probably hoping that there was going to be another blue card. Well, so I, saw a, I saw a Force of Will in the brainstorm. Yeah, but that's what I mean. So he doesn't actually have a blue card to pitch to the Force of Will. That's oh, why I got okay. Council's Judgment. And... Well, then that was definitely a shuffle. Yes. Because you don't... You, you're relying... Unless no, no, no. you missaw relying... it as a Jace. No, no. He was relying on the Jace to brainstorm. Oh, this is brutal. I really like this. This is Palace Jail is so swingy, and I and I can't stand playing with it, but like it's so powerful, and and I agree, it's a nice sideboardian because you can just deal with, you can just come back from so far behind with it. Yeah. Now the problem here is the containment priest isn't going to get him because it doesn't have flying. Otherwise, he can end of turn flash in the containment priest, attack, become the monarch. He can still but... do that. It's a bit risky, but he can wait for Palace Jailer to swing, take the damage, and then end of yeah, turn flash him, and get monarch Give back. him two cards, though, in the process. I think, yeah, he just needs to burn a source of plowshares on that and then have containment priest. So, yeah, he now just gets to jam containment priest, attack with impunity, become the monarch, and yeah. then he's really far ahead again. Yeah, and he gets the mentor back as well. So the loss of the Jace is not as uh, dire as we thought. Um, I think I think it was worth him going in and just, you know, brainstorming and hoping to find a blue card to pitch the force. You know, I, I think that he's so highly likely to draw a blue card off a brainstorm uh, with Jace that it wouldn't be a problem. Uh, so, but here is just going to win the alternate method: actual creatures turning sideways. Right? Yeah, that's right. Um, containment priest, uh, really, really powerful here. And I don't think Raj would have expected that. Mm. I mean, there could have been a snap there as well, I suppose. Which yeah. does the same thing. Now, cataclysm could do something, but now hardcast force of will is up, making a token off mentor. And if that's the case, I believe that Raj just concedes. All right, like unless he draws a second cataclysm, I guess. But even then, there's a resolved mentor. Mm. And you sure. can see where these, it, you know, this is what I mean, like, Council's Judgment, yeah, technically there's things you want to deal with, but, like, it's just not where I want to be, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, there's not much, there's a force of will, so there's really nothing that's going to be, like, resolving there anyway, but even if that resolved, you know, like, Gene's still ahead. Yes. Because yeah. he's still got, like, the 2-1, he's still got the, the um, Monarch. For sure. So his hand is like Swords to Plowshares and another Swords to Plowshares, I think. Like two Swords to Plowshares. So he's pretty far ahead. I think that Raj's only way to win here is a Cataclysm that doesn't get counted. another Mentor in D&D. Oh, another Mentor. Okay, yeah. So Mentor instead of two Swords. Swords to Plowshares and Mentor is pretty strong. Um, we we'll say Raj... Brightling, Brightling's is, pretty sweet. Raj but... being very patient on his Cataclysm as well. Yes. Maybe burning out some of those Force of Wills. Yeah, and then just resolve it and That's go right. like, you're going to be left with a single and, mentor and a single land. And I wonder if Dean shouldn't have forced the Council's Judgment because if you've already got the backup mentor... Yeah, I see what you mean. But then he wouldn't have Hardcast Force up if he plays Mentor in the same turn. Because he'd be true. only... Yeah, he'd but you can just lean on... Short. You can just lean on the Monastery... The, sorry, the Monarch... And the um, containment priest for a little while. You can be patient. Mm-hmm. You don't have to play it out straight away. So very, He's, very different sideboard options for both blood. players here. Taste blood. It's pretty ready to get there. So spell snare being the only relevant card, or what was the other one? Yeah, spell snare the only relevant card. So the rest were just like three lands. So you know, spell snare is probably going to do literal nothing. Mainly because your opponent knows of the spell snare, so they're not going to run their creature, their you know random two drop creature into the spell snare because it's going to create a mentor for you. So, yeah, seems unlikely. Yeah, it's going to be relevant. The, the game's done anyway, you know. Yeah, even uh, even cataclysm doesn't help you because it'll wipe the board, but a one single mentor will get there. I think this is over committing. Absolutely. Uh, I I I. You only <laughs> don't, lose. To, you only lose yeah, to sweepers. Right? I, I don't. I don't yeah, absolutely. I think this is really risky. There's no what what's Crash gonna have like four swords to plowshares. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. even if he had four swords to plowshares, you still win. <laughs> and why wouldn't he have just done that in the last turn? Can you imagine if Raj here goes, you know, cataclysm swords? That would be so brutal. You know, that would be the maximum punishment for the greed. 
See, Dean just just tasted the blood in the water. Yeah, I and think... he was like, "Yeah, I want to, I want to finish this game." That's right. It was really loose. Like, yeah, you. I don't know what a second mentor does. It's not like you're vying for board position at all. There is no board position yeah. from Raj. So, you know, that's why you want to commit. You, you, you know, it's, it's, that's the difference between going wide. If your opponent has board, you need to go wide by, you know, putting more pressure on the board to beat the board. But mm. once you've beaten the board, you know, that's it. Yeah. So, uh, Dean keeps a fetch land here because the fetch land will be able to find either a basic island or basic uh, planes, allowing him to have the option to source a plowshare something or cast a ponder and make a token. Uh, it just all depends on the structure of his hand. I know that he's got a source of plowshares in hand. Oh, there we go. I knew about the spell snare. Yeah. The spell snare so, that's a bit of a misplay because the token's super the, relevant. The I token think. is so relevant. I the token think, yeah. is basically lethal here if there's a ponder. You wanted to wait for. Um path to exile or something like that yeah this is sometimes a casualty of not writing things down like if you don't write your opponent has spell snare down mm. then you're just gonna go you know and, and well, get, kind of get caught up with your turn a well, bit. especially there's not that many cards in hand and there's only one land so there's also the chance Raj just plays a three drop and wins right yes like yes. he can just play a three drop and mentor will not trigger until you kill them because you only <laughs> need it. two swings with like a you know a three power creature. Yeah, because Raj has been conserving a lot of cards in hand. He could have just gone land, go, and then the following turn, land, play a Brightling. Brightling he had Brightling in hand. Yeah, well, Brightling, yeah. and it's just like, that's, that's just disgusting because unless Dean had a ponder or something, he wasn't, his mentor wasn't really going to get anywhere. Um, but then again, Dean had. Uh, Monarch as well. He had Monarch, he also had Swords of Plowshares in hand. So I think it was unwinnable for Raj, right? Yeah, true. Yeah. But you still got to play to your house. Yes, yeah, true. So let's see if they change up their boards. I've been very brutal on their, on their <laughs> sideboard. Sav- savage. I've been savage. Um, uh, when, uh, one, one thing that I believe uh, for Raj, when he was on the draw, bringing in three councils' judgments, uh, it's kind of defensible. Even though I wouldn't do it, I think it's kind of defensible. However, on the play, you don't need three Council's Judgments. No. You're just going to be so far ahead of your opponent, pressure them and say, do you have Terminus or not? I'm just going to try and kill you. And then when they finally have Terminus to kill two creatures, you then deploy your Brightling or you know whatever it might be. So I think you trim, for sure, a Council's Judgment and for certain you trim two Path to Exile. I'd be really, really cu- uh, curious to see what Raj actually took out for these slots. Because as we were saying, it's usually just your fringiest creature, like, you know, your Phyrexian Revoker or something. But in this current configuration... Yeah, in this current configuration, uh, there's only two Revokers. So if the two Revokers are gone, you know, sometimes you just have to kind of go... Do I councils... Tomic do anything in this? No, not really. Then I'd probably take out two... um... Tomic is a two-drop flyer for 2 3 to get yeah, past cast mages and you know Captain probably take out Tomic and um, Crusaders container and priests. yeah the the thing is though, if you do that your curve Maybe is so swords. much higher you've taken out all your twos so one thing i like is on the play don't don't bring in so many councils judgments lean on lean on your evokers because the evokers can just name the, Jason Mind Sculptor mm. or something and then uh, uh, Dean has to use a Swords to Plowshares to kill the Revoker which is not killing your Mirren Crusader Brightling Flicker Wisp you know the actually big threats which are then beating face so uh, there's an element of tempo that needs to be uh, used when you're on the play here yeah absolutely I think yeah if I was sideboarding I'd want to load up on threats I know that seems weird versus a, a sweeper deck but I'd want a few more threats uh, so that I can recover after a sweep. Yeah. Because you've got to assume a sweep is going to happen. And you've got to assume some interaction is going to happen. Um, and I think you also need to assume that some amount of accumulated knowledge is, is going to happen. Mm. Um, but it's just about you being more powerful than that. Yes. Yeah. You know what's really sweet? The one Mystic Sanctuary in Dean's deck. Like it. I like it a lot. Right. Especially in like a Terminus deck. Putting a spell Terminus. back on top. It's, it's exactly where you want to be. Yep. It fetches... Um, and even if you weren't on this sort of miracle, you know, if you were just in your general control deck, I think it's 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 a good one to. Put. Yeah, if you were on like Grixis control uh, with ancestral knowledge, uh, I mean accumulated knowledge, and you want to return a Colligan's command or something, or in the late game you've got three AKs 
in the bin and you've drawn a bunch of cards and you put one of the AKs back on top and use it to draw mm. draw cards again. Um, all right, so that hand... Snap and lands, I think? I thought... Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't catch it, but whatever it was, uh, Dean does not like yeah, it. Yeah, didn't like it at all. I would keep, like, snap lands and, like, a brainstorm or a ponder or something. Yeah, for sure. Because you can go, like, turn one, ponder, find gas, you know, turn two, whatever, nothing. Turn three, <laughs> turn three, snap, ponder, and you're probably, like, fine. Yeah, yeah. Because he can be pretty confident to know that Raj has not kept in four swords to plowshares. Also, the heavy land hands sometimes can counter, like, Raj won't find a wasteland rich and poor. I think, I think sometimes people mulligan their heavy land hands too aggressively, and their light land hands don't mulligan enough, right? When they're in, in well, the they're, legacy they're, format, for, you know? Especially first D2. Yeah, exactly. In the legacy format, against a an opponent that you don't know what they're even on. Well, Renin 6 is gone now, but especially when there were tons of Renin 6s going around and therefore tons of Wastelands. Like, four colour decks were running Wastelands. Mm. You know, there's a lot of them around there and you got to say, not just, do I have lands and spells? Do I have lands and spells and what happens if I, I get Wastelands into you? Yeah, exactly. You know, I don't think you should mulligan a hand just because right. you're going to so use Wastelands, but still. Five land hand with Wasteland and Port. And he's got two threats. Yeah, and a Stoneforge. I think that's perfectly fine for DNT. That's why DNT runs the ports, so that if it floods out, it's got something to do. Um, and Stoneforge Mystic's obviously a huge amount of gas. Yes, absolutely. There's really sweet things you can do, shenanigans with ports, you know, porting your opponent's fetch lands, and then they get tapped, and then you wasteland the fetch land, or you port their land when they've got a brainstorm on the stack. So he, I thought he had fetching. Stoneforge, but Raj has just said, go. was he scared of Spell, spell Snare? snare. I think, I think he's just really there, scared though. of Spell Snare there. You're more likely to bait out a Force of Will. I'm almost certain that Miracle's decks don't play more than, at most, two Spell Snare, but sometimes one is the average. But so. even then, like, now there's just Spell Snare here, right? Because it's not like Miracle's has got heaps to do on turn two anyway. Mm, yeah. We can now see the uh, casualty of sleeving up Miracle's decks with more uh, non-basics than uh, they generally should. The well, red you were saying splash. You think now without red splash, and yeah. this is red splash. That's so different. The red, the red splash is but without such red splash, one a, such a liability, absolute liability. Red splash. Um, it's not a free roll like it used to be, just because of the nature of the format. Uh, and you sometimes just want to be on single tundra, mm-hmm. bunch of prismatic vistas, single tundra, all basics, maybe a Caracas, mm-hmm. and the rest is just you know. Allowing you to leverage either a back to basics or two, or just don't get wasteland. You can see here the spell snare still up. Like I feel like there's always going to be a spell snare up, mm. unless Raj like Raj didn't have turn one ether vial, so it's not like he was like waiting for the ether vial. So I don't really know why he didn't just jam it. Uh, you know, it's very hard to keep this deck. This deck doesn't tap out very often, and if it does tap out, you like honestly you probably lost. Like, yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to give them time. The longer the game goes, the more ancestral knowledge is ancestral. Yeah, and that's what's called ancestral. Yeah, AKs, okay. yeah. <laughs> that, that, that accumulated. That's that's why like Death and Texas is so strong. That's why Stoneforge is so strong because mm. it's like turn two on the play. It's just like oh, here's this threat. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. But like, yeah, do, do I do... want to use a sword to pleasures on it? But yeah. you've already got the yeah, sword in that's hand. Right. And... Yeah. But if you leave it alone, it's just like an unforgivable amount of gas, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. So, Raj has been porting every turn, Uh, so Raj is kind of acting like the control deck, where he's just saying, denying some mana, you know, know, preemptively, and not actually doing anything, and gradually building up an ether vial to deploy his threats, uh, to get around, you know, uh, to kind of essentially counter his opponent's counter spells. Uh, so he's kind of playing a very grindy control That's right, right. Uh, game, but I don't like, think he has enough card advantage to make that a legitimate No, strategy. he doesn't, because he's going to get inundated by the AKs, mm. and like, Mentor's not even going to come down on turn 3, even if you weren't boarding, because yes. it's going to come down on turn 4 with a Ponder and Forcer will back up, so like, I think turn four is the turn you want to be porting. Yeah. And here's the double and now ports. He's, yeah, so now he's still scared of Mentor. So once you've committed to this plan, like, I'm scared of Mentor, so I'm going to port... You're just gonna. You're just gonna be on it. Eventually, like ports aren't gonna do it. There's a point at which ports can't do it. So, what's your game plan after that? Ports are really good when either a you've already got the threat out, 
and so you're slowing the game down mm. in the same way that Wasteland slows the game down. Or they're good if you're just out of gas and you've got a terrible hand. At least I can do something. Yep. That's how I see them. That's fair. Or like I've got a vial out, which I guess is his plan. You know, I've got a vial out and I'm going to... I'm going to leverage I'm this. Gonna, I'm going to leverage the vial. Mm. So it is sort of working. I guess that third plan, but you're very patient with the Stone Forge. I, I think I would have played a turn two. Very patient with the Stone Forge. Does Dean have the spell snare? I think I just asked the question. Yeah, so this Stone Forge getting getting played off the vial is and letting him untap and have an active battle. It does spell this does look pretty strong. good. This does look pretty good for um for Raj here, I'll admit. Mm-hmm. Although Dean hasn't hit his lands. And now I wonder if Dean kept that original hand with the heavy lands. It's like five land whatever. Five lands, yeah. like he'd be fine here. Yeah, it's sometimes yeah, people just undervalue the nature of hitting a land drop every turn and actually just playing through Wasteland because a lot of game plans in Legacy are, hey, I'm going to waste you and you're going to stumble and I'm going to take advantage of that. And if you don't stumble, you just absolutely just grind That's your right. opponent out. Yeah, hoping that they stumble is not a good is not a good mm. game plan. Mm. So is this a desperation? Oh no, that's right. It was just a tap, a tap in the draw step. Uh, I thought it might have been like a desperation brainstorm or something. They're always the worst ones where you kind of like, I haven't hit my land drops. I'm being ported. I need to do something, and you just kind of have to. So Sophie, there, I think I prefer Batterskull because Sophie's very good, but I almost want to go wider because I assume they're going to have some interaction, like some sorts of flower shares or whatever, and I'd rather go end of turn uh, play Batterskull. And now I'm getting value, I'm shipping in there, um, and if I really want, I can commit and play the Sophie in the same turn as well. Um, I think it might be the fact that he didn't want to get blown out by Terminus, because he, if he plays the Batis, if he keeps the Batiscal in hand, he's always got a creature in hand, essentially, and this way he had the ability to deploy the Brightling at the end of It's uh, not hard turn. to return the Batiscal, though, and then replay it. True, like, that's this is, true. To be yeah, fair, he point. had the bright link, so now he can do the same thing. I, I think this play is very good from Raj. Um, I think I might have done it a bit differently, though. I think I would have played Batter Skull, and then if I really desperately want to try to commu- connect with Sophie, I can do a main phase, um, activate Stoneforge. Mm. Yep. But you got to assume that that's getting sourced, right? Yep, that's fair. So, uh, bright link gets returned... Because it's pretty sweet. It's got a pretty good oh, immunity. Yeah, I like this actually. Yeah, it's yeah, got a pretty strong. good immunity to uh, spot removal mm. and even wrath effects. It's truth. Maybe that means um, Dean doesn't swords there just because of that exact play. Yeah. Although I guess now you switch off Batterskull because uh, so Sophie wouldn't um, equip to the Stoneforge. So then, yep, you, so then you'd be able to go Batterskull here. So it was so, more of a tempo sort yeah. of plowshares than an actual it's removal. It's pretty desperate either way, isn't it? Mm, that's it. Man, Brightling's so good. Brightling's awesome. Only bad side about Brightling, can't be fetched by uh, Flickerwiz, uh, not Flickerwiz, uh, for, uh, Recruiter of the Guard. What's its um, creature type? Uh, bright. Bad? I don't is know. it a human? <laughs> or is it like a shapeshifter? Probably like a changeling, shapeshifter, yeah. something along those lines. Yeah, so we can't, you know, engineered plague, put three engineer, plague engineers down, all naming shapeshifter. Uh. Well, it's one of those, I, I, I seem to vaguely, before I talk, I'm just going to figure out what creature type it is. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get our tech team before, on that. Yeah, before, before I like go on about how it's not a human, I'm just going to double check that. So here's so, Snapcaster Mage uh, flashing in to flashback Swords to Plowshares on the Stoneforge Mystic so that it's unable to attack in and, you know, get some value the following turn. You know, sometimes you just got to do these kind of tempo-y things. Um, the thing is, with Recruiter of the Guard coming down uh, to search out Pal- uh, not Palace Jailer, um, Sanctum Prelate, it means that Sanctum Prelate is going to be able to come down with impunity and name a thing that he's scared of, something like Six, because then he can't get Terminus. Something like four, so he can't get supreme verdicted, or just one as the thing that just shuts off the most amount of stuff uh, in the deck. So I was right all along. So my first guess, it is a shape shifter. shifter. Nice, um, and and that's part of why DNT doesn't play Cavernous Source anymore. 
Or as many decks play Kevin and Solve. Because it's just too many creature types. Too many creature types. Yeah, yep, I see. What's Sanctum Prelate? Uh, so Sanctum Prelate is a human, I'm sure. But <laughs> the it's human cleric, probably. Uh, so it's, name, it's naming one. Now, we just went through the various numbers you could choose before. And one is the catch-all. It's the one where you just kind of go, well, I'm really far ahead. And I'm just going to try and make sure you don't get back into the game by pondering, preordaining sorts of power sharesing and so on. But quite often with Sanctum Prelate, you do name six. Well, I was going to say, it feels weird to name six because they've only got three mana, but it really is Terminus or Bust at this point, isn't it? Yes, that's all right. It's like, how do I lose? Mm, Maybe a Terminus, but even then he probably doesn't lose against Terminus. But by naming one, he's saying, look, you can't dig for any answers. You can't spot remove. You're going to have to Terminus. And even if you Terminus, I'll return my Brightling. And I'll be able to equip the Brightling to a sort of uh, Fire and Ice. Which seems like a pretty good position to be in, right? Yeah, I mean, and this is classic DNT, isn't it? It's this sort of, uh, like, array of different threats that aren't very clean to answer. Like, Brightling's not super clean to answer. And even if you swept here, then there's still, like, a Batter Skull that can can return, re- be replayed, and, you know, or, like, a Vial that can end a turn, like, mm. cast a thing. So, you know, it's hard to get super clean... Um, answers versus DNT. Yeah, absolutely. And Plague Engineer is a clean answer sometimes, but it just all depends on the way that the uh, game plays out. That's Some right. Death and Taxes players are so wily that they think so much about their creature types to play around Plague Engineer, so that you only get a you know a, a two for one at most off the Plague Engineer itself. And uh, sometimes you just don't have the liberty to do that. But in this instance, look, if there was a Plague, Plague Engineer here, it just wouldn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Um, you know, because and, and, you, you even got the 1-1 one, one is equipped as well. So. Mm, mm. Um, this Containment Priest, I think it's a little bit too little, too late. Can't contain yeah. this. He just did. I think, yeah, I think I, he just need. He, he got a bit unlucky not top taking lands. I mean, we can criticise Dean for not keeping that, that first hand, but still, that's not to expect it just because you mulligan the land heavy hand. You're going to be stuck on three. Um I think but he's probably going to watch he had this five. match back again. He had five lands, right? And he got wastelanded twice yeah. and then poured it out of the game. That's the thing. Like, he's probably going to so watch like, this match back. having five lands is and, perfectly reasonable. Yeah, and realise that post-board, Raj slows down so much that um, keeping a hand that just allows you to hit your land drops, which is what you eminently want to do in, the, in control, is just often the safest uh, keep. So Containment Priest having to chump here would be bad because... It is lethal, right? Because the Brightling can form lethal with the uh, shock off the sword, so he actually has to chump block. I think going back to that as well, though, it, especially if you're disciplined with brainstorms, you can say, "Yeah, I've got a few too many, too many lands," but like, I'm going to do like a turn three brainstorm that's going to turn turn that around. You know, mm-hmm. like not n- not that I saw the brainstorm there. I think he did have one other spell beyond the snap, but it just being like, "Yeah, like I've got a chance. Like I can just ponder." He's got a lot of cantrips in there. I can like cantrip. I, see, I was fine about gas. to say like, why? Why would you play Thalia here? Because that was actually a terminus on top, but it got ported. Ah, oh, port. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So that's why he played Thalia because he's like terminus doesn't do it because you're just going to port that white source. And I guess Thalia turns off in response. AK. Yeah. You can in response to the port AK nice. and then like trigger your miracle before you draw step. Yep. That's fair. All right, that was a sweet match. Uh, so this one is goes to Raj. We're going to see Raj in the next round against me, I believe. Ooh. So we're going to get to see uh, Death and Taxes versus uh, something different. All right, thank you very much, everyone. That was round two. We'll see you in round three. See you then.